I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Why yes, that is me, the fleetest chocobo in all the realms. And today, I will teach you how to become just like me. That's right, we are doing the complete beginner's guide to chocobo racing. So first off, what is chocobo racing? Chocobo Racing is one of the four main side games available at the Golden Saucer. As the name suggests, the game centers around racing chocobos on one of three tracks, with various elements depending on the rank of the race. After completing the quest, it could happen to you, you gain access to the Golden Saucer. You can move up to the chocobo square, where you can start and complete the quest so you want to be a jockey. The quest has you travel to Bent Branch Meadow, where you receive your first chocobo and is followed up with So We Think You Can Ride This Chocobo, which sees you back to the Golden Saucer, where you register your first racing chocobo, and at this point, you're good to go. The game features two different modes. The first is Challenge Mode, which has you race various races against NPC opponents, where your goal is to place higher than the special NPCs marked in red. Doing so, you will like to take on the next rank, though you will need a chocobo of the proper ranking to do so, and also unlocks more chocobo racing abilities at rank 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. The second mode is a regular racing mode which has to compete against both NPCs and other players on various maps. You will be placed in a bracket based on your chocobo's ranking, which in turn is determined by their stats. Knowing this, we aim to get you well on your way by looking at what your chocobo's stats mean, how to improve your stats, how to breed for better chocobos, as well as showing you an example of a complete build. Understanding your stats. A chocobo has a couple of variables, including stats, star ranking, pedigree, and preferred weather. As far as that goes, there are five different ones. Maximum speed. This is self-explanatory and decides how fast your chocobo can run. Acceleration. This stat determines how quickly your chocobo can accelerate to its max speed. Endurance. Determines how fast your chocobo can run before becoming lathered, which is a status effect that increases your stamina usage. Note that the Viki's description insinuates that this stat increases the amount of time you can remain at high speed without becoming lathered, when it actually increases the threshold for how fast it can go before becoming lathered. Stamina Determines the size of your chocobo stamina pool. Though it will always be displayed on a bar ranging from 0 to 100%, its actual size will increase. Cunning Determines how well your chocobo can turn and strafe, and decreases how much speed you lose while doing so. It also affects how well your chocobo does in rough terrain, such as deeper waters. Each of these stats can vary in their maximum value, ranging from 80 to 500. The formula for this goes as follows. 40 times pedigree plus star rating minus 20. Your first chocobo will be of pedigree 1, with a star ranking of 2 in each stat, putting in at 40 times 3 minus 20, meaning that we'll start off with a maximum of 100 in every stat. Both pedigree and star ranking can be increased through chocobo breeding, which we will go into later. The last major variable is preferred weather. There are three different kinds of weather, fair, foul, and neutral. Fair weather prefers sunshine, clear skies, and heat waves. Foul weather prefers rain, showers, and thunderstorms, while neutral types prefer clouds and fogs. The effect of weather compared to the various preferences aren't that well documented, but in the preferred weather, fair weather chocobos are believed to gain a bonus to their cunning, whereas foul weather chocobos receive less penalties from foul weather racing. Foul weathers are known to decrease both maximum speed and your ladder threshold. Since a cunning bonus is typically niche and the foul weather penalties are fairly harsh, foul weather chocobos are generally considered to have a slight advantage, but not so much that it should be a focus unless you plan on making the chocobo your permanent one. Increasing your chocobo stats While the max cap of your chocobo stats depends upon and can only be increased through breeding, you can still improve your chocobo stat up until you hit the maximum cap. This can be done via ranking up and feeding your chocobo special feed, neither of which is mutually exclusive. Your chocobo ranks up from experience gained from races, with a total max rank of 50, so the chocobo can be retired as early as level 40 and be used for breeding purposes. Each rank up will pick 5 randomly selected stats and increase them by 1% of their maximum stat cap value. The same stat can be chosen several times during a rank up. Furthermore, ranking up also unlocks another feeding session for your chocobo. The feeding sessions can be initiated in the chocobo square. During these, you will be able to feed your chocobos to either grade 1, 2 or 3 feed, for the various stats, with grade 1 feed increasing the max stat by 1% of its max stat cap, grade 2 by 2%, and grade 3 by 3%. 
Initially, only Grade 1 and 3 feeds will be made available to you, with the Grade 1 feed being craftable by culinarians, or it can be purchased from the Feather Trader in the Central Shroud for 1.5 thousand gil each. Meanwhile, Grade 3 feeds are purchasable from the Tack and Feed Trader in the Chocobo Square for 1,345 MGP each. After completing the quest, like Sire, like Fledgling, which unlocks after you have a Chocobo reach rank 40 and has you breed a Chocobo, Grade 2 feed will be available to you from the Tack and Feed Trader for 610 MGP per feed. Seeing as you will rapidly be going through Chocobos while breeding, I do not suggest defaulting to Grade 3 feeds until you land a Chocobo you want to keep, as it can become very expensive. Personally, for ranking up a Chocobo, I prefer running on the Singoli Roads, as it is a fast track needing a narrower stat spread. Because of how max speed and ladder thresholds work, I would aim to keep Endurance a little bit higher than speed while also increasing stamina at a decent pace. For this track, I would go for this 6 feeding session ration. Maximum speed 1, Acceleration 1, Endurance 2, Stamina 2. This spread should let you maintain decent speed throughout the entire run and let you mostly upper half placements resulting in higher MGP rewards, experience and rank ups. Sagoli Roads doesn't really feature a whole lot of rough terrain or major turns, so canning is largely optional here. However, when you get to 9 pedigree chocobo with 4 star stats, wait until the remaining number until cap is a multiple matching your amount of available feeding sessions before you start feeding your chocobo. For example, if you're looking to max your speed, wait until you're sitting at, for example, 350 out of 500, while having 10 feeding sessions available. This is because, with a max stat of 500, each grade 3 feed will grant 15 points towards a targeted stat. This allows you to max out said stat with no waste. After this, the stat will be taken out of the available selection pool for stat increases on rank up, meaning that the remaining stats will grow faster, allowing you to maximize your total stat gain. Increasing your Chocobo stats through breeding. No matter how correctly you train your Chocobo, there's only one way to increase your Chocobo's pedigree and stat total, and that is through breeding. As I mentioned previously, the formula for calculating maximum stat cap is 40 times pedigree plus star rating minus 20. So in order to get that wanted 500 of 500, you're going to need a 9 pedigree 4 star Chocobo. So how does this work? First and foremost, in order to breed a racing Chocobo, you want to raise your racing Chocobo to a rank 40, which is the earliest point where it can be retired while still being able to be bred. Upon retiring your Chocobo and choosing their inheritor ability at a race Chocobo trainer in the Golden Saucer, you will receive a retired Chocobo registration form for your Chocobo, which can be used 9 times. At this point, you can choose to do one of two things. Either buy another grade 1 Chocobo and train them until rank 40 and do the same with them, or you can buy a covering permit at the MGP vendor in the Chocobo Square. These permits create a randomly generated one-time use covering permission for the pedigree and grade and gender of your choosing. Given how stats and star rankings are passed on, which we will cover in just a bit, I recommend buying a covering with decent stats. At this point, we head back to the Chocobo Reader in Bent Branch Meadows. If this is the first time you do the quest like Star like Fledging, just follow the markers. Then, when talking to the breeder about the covering, you choose the permits you'd like to use, one of which must be a retired Chocobo registration form. When this is done, the breeding will begin and after roughly 30 minutes, a brand new Chocobo will be ready for registration. The pedigree of the resulting offspring is determined as such. The pedigree of the lowest pedigree parent plus one. This means that a P1P1 breeding, a P1P2, and a P1P9 breeding will always result in a pedigree 2 Chocobo. So far, the process is fairly straightforward. Rinse and repeat to move up in ranks. Generally, to save MGP you want to buy covering permits of the same pedigree as the Chocobo you want to breed. It does, however, get a little bit more complicated with star rating and how they are passed on. In short, a racing Chocobo inherits their star ratings not from their parents, but from their grandparents. This is because every racing Chocobo has a stat line from their father and one from their mother. Their final personal stat line will be a mix of the two, but when breeding, they pass down both of their parents' stat lines rather than their own. This means that the resulting fledgling will possess four stat lines. Before you get a registration form for this Chocobo, the game will merge the two lines on the father's side into one, picking stats from the two at random to form one line, before doing the same to the two lines on the mother's side. This results in the registration form showing one father side track and one mother side track. Then, 
When you register the chocobo, it will go through the same process again to reduce your racing chocobo's functioning stat line. Yes, this is confusing at first, so have this chart again. In essence, it comes down to a large amount of 50-50 rolls. In order to avoid too much trial and error, and to mitigate some of the RNG involved, it is advised to build up a good breeding stock early on in the process. The more 4 star ratings you have, the less is the chance to get poor stats. Like most other games where breeding is involved, there are no penalties for inbreeding, so if you have a chocobo capable of passing down outstanding stats, feel free to give them a few more rounds in a barn until you have both a male and a female with great inherited stat lines. Granted, you could also keep buying coverings of the right pedigree and hope to be carried by RNG to save some time, but this can backfire and set you back a bit. In the end, if you want a Shokobo good enough to get the Training Day achievement for the Shokobo Trainer title, you're going to need a Shokobo which can reach a rating of 285, which will require a pedigree 9 Shokobo with at least 17 out of 20 possible Starline rankings. In doing so, you will also qualify for every single Shokobo Challenge course, whose final rating requirement is 271, meaning that you can also get all achievements with the 17 out of 20 star Shokobo. The final influencing inheritable factor is Shokobo abilities. Once your Shokobo retires, you can choose to praise one of its two possible abilities. The ability you praise will be the ability it can pass on, and the resulting bred Shokobo will choose randomly between its mother's and its father's ability. The ability the Shokobo inherits cannot be changed, but at rank 10, the Shokobo learns a secondary ability which can be forgotten and changed with items bought from the Shokobo item vendor. If you are unsure of which ability you want to pass on as a hereditary ability, it is hard to go wrong with Shoko Cure Tree or Increased Stamina Tree, as they are both good, versatile abilities. Both of these will be available for purchase from the Attack and Feed Trader after beating Shokobo Course 12, Bag of Tricks. Finally, let's have a look at an example of a Finnish build. We will be looking no further than my own Chocobo, the Wild Kwe, and their Super Sprint build. This build is specifically tailored towards the Sigoli Road, where the short nature of the race allows it to use a Super Sprint ability from the get-go and finish with leftover stamina if it's hit the Restoration Pad and doesn't get hit too many times by Brachis Waters or Shoko Meteors. Increased Stamina Tree also helps in this endeavor. As far as prioritized abilities go, max out Stamina, Endurance and Cunning to allow the Chocobo to maintain a Super Sprint throughout the race with Stamina and Endurance maxing out your Stamina Pool, and Cunning helping with turning in rough terrain. Put the rest into speed in case you somehow run out of Stamina and get a second win. However, since Super Sprint pushes you to the speed cap instantaneously, acceleration is entirely unimportant to the build. So long as you grab the healing panel and dodge hazards, you should be able to reliably deal with any NPC opponents, even top tiers, such as Starbreaker. And that is it for this guide. I know it was a lot but hopefully it did something to teach you about the wondrous world of chocobo breeding. If you liked the video and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, make sure to put them down in the comment section below. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Have a nice one!